Now let's switch across and have a look at another common service that you might be interacting with, which is of course Slack. You might have seen Slack in some previous sessions, which is a great way for us to send messages or any F a good way to bubble up information. So if we take a look at Slack, again, we will provide and guide you through the authentication mechanism to successfully set up your Slack authentication. But you'll find a couple of different operations that you're going to be using quite commonly potentially with this connector. The first one is, of course, is being able to send a message. And you'll notice that for the channel, Trey will handily give you another dynamic drop down field so that you can just select the channel that you want to send the message in from this drop down list. The message. And one of the concepts, if you're not familiar on Slack, is the idea of blocks. And blocks are a way for you to be able to effectively format the message that you need. You will have two options that you do have available for how you want to configure the blocks. Of course, you don't have to include a block if you just want to send a simple message. But if you wanted to have a little bit more advanced messages being sent, so things like interactive components and buttons, blocks are how you would interact with that on, on Slack side. There's two ways in which you can configure that. You can either decide to put in raw blocks where you can just paste in the actual block code itself. And a really easy way to be able to grab that is that if you head to Slack, they do have a block builder kit where you can actually use a, quite a nice interface to be able to build out the, the message that you want to send. And over on the right hand side, it will actually give you the raw block payload that you can send in the request that you can just grab, copy, and then paste that into the raw block section on tray. And that would handily send uh, the raw block through. Alternatively, you can also select blocks as a second option. So if we pop another Slack step in at the bottom just to show you what the block section within Tray looks like, I can also within my blocks decide on the blocks and then I can add the blocks individually, including the block types that I want to send and any additional information that I need. So this is another way directly within the connector itself. You can kind of build that blocks that you want to send outside of just taking it from the block builder and pasting it in with that raw block operation. Another scenario as well is a little bit more when it comes to interactivity as well. So there's two examples that are going to be coming into play here. This first one is going to send a very simple message. But this second one, what I want to do is I want to send a message and provide a button that someone can click on that says approve. And so what we're doing here is I've configured the raw blocks, which is just a very simple message that I'm saying, hey there, please approve the following request. And as we come down in the connector under the attachments section, you will find a portion here for actions. Now, don't worry too much about the, the whole how many different options there are to configure within Slack. Slack gives you a lot of options when it comes to information that you want to include in the messages themselves, which is great. It gives you a lot of customization. But for now, I'm going to keep these blank. But coming back to the actions, under the actions section, I can decide on whether I want a button or a menu. In my case, I want to add a button on as the type so I can have that approval button I can click on, the text that I want to send into there, as well as the style. And a really important point here is that, of course, when someone clicks the button, right, we don't have any idea about when someone's going to click the button in Slack. And so what we need to do is we're going to actually set up another tray workflow that is going to handle the interactivity with the components that we send in Slack itself. And the reason why that's important is that you'll notice there's a section for the actions handler workflow. And this drop down field will actually show you all of the workflows that are applicable to be selected for this field within your tray account. And you'll notice I've selected this Slack button handler one down here. There is the ability to pass through additional pieces of information, but the way in which this handler workflow works is that if we switch across to this second workflow, when we look at the trigger mechanisms that we have on tray, you will notice Slack is an external app event that we can select. And when we select that as the trigger mechanism over on the right hand side for the operation, I have a couple of different options that I have available, including on action. And so when I select this, what this will mean is that when I configure that in the drop down for the Slack action workflow, which is this portion that we configured, any interactivity will send this message directly to this second tray workflow. So it will send it in the first workflow as the message. Someone clicks on the button in Slack and that response about that button being clicked will be sent to this tray workflow that is going to be picked up by that Slack trigger. You do have some additional options here as well around you know, specific Slack events. So for example, listening for channel creations or items like that so that you can trigger a tray workflow based on different criteria as required. Alternatively, you also have the ability to set up slash commands as well, which we won't be covered during this session, but it's a good one to highlight for when you have some more advanced use cases where you want to set up your own slash slack command as well. If you are interested in exploring the slash slack commands, then taking a look at the documentation for our slack connector will have a section on how you can set up those slash slack commands as well. But for now, I'm going to keep mine simple and I'm going to do it on, on action so that I will pick up those responses coming through. 
And what I'm doing here, and we'll cover what this is, is that let's actually run this workflow and see what this looks like on Slack side. So I've run my workflow, I've got my Slack channel that this has been sent to here, and you'll notice it's actually sent two messages. The first one was that first very simple send message that I did, and you'll notice that this block is quite comprehensive in terms of what it's sending. That was based on me providing the raw block input. And then the second one is that button that I specified. And so you can see that I can click on the button, and once I click on approved, it's now changed to thank you. And that thank you was actually generated from a response that I configured in my tray workflow. And so if you take a look at what happened over here, we can take a look at the Slack button handler and click on logs. And we can see that we got through that a trigger action to say, hey, someone clicked on this button, who it was, in which case the Slack channel names, the IDs, callback IDs and items like that as well that we can use. And we can use the information in here within our workflow to decide actually what we want to do with the data at different points or you know what we want to do now that someone's approved this request. So let's say it's a deprovisioning workflow for a user as part of a HR use case where you want to decide or have the ability to say, hey, approve this user to be deactivated and that approval could be the starting point for a whole integration or automation that you have. One of the other things that we you would have seen there is that it changed to thank you when I clicked on approve and so what you will find is that when you have the actions on Slack there will be a response URL which allows you to actually send a response back to Slack for that activity or that interaction with that approval button. And what we can then do there is we can use a second operation within Slack called send a fear more message or response. We decide on the message, which is where I configured thank you, and it will expect the response URL that I can point to the response URL from our Slack trigger, and that will just send that response back to the user as part of that interactivity. And so you can start to see Slack is a really good way when you start to have some more interactive components and quite a common way you might find in which you want to start some of your integrations and automations with the combination of slash slack commands or slash slack commands bit of a tongue twister or alternatively the interactivity with things like buttons and so forth you will also find a whole host of additional operations under the slack connector as well for things like reminders creating channels getting user details listing users sending messages a whole host of administrative things that you might want to do across slack as well outside of just sending the messages that we've covered during this session Again, as always, click on the little question mark to have the full breakdown of the operations and take a look through some of the operations that you might be dealing with there.